So we haven't done a hat patch. Today, I thought we might do one, but you know, with a twist. That's coming up. Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Reitz. This is Weaver Leather Supply. Today, I thought we'd tackle something that we haven't done yet, and that's a hat patch. But as you saw from the thumbnail, we're gonna do it a little bit different than what you might normally see with a traditional hat patch. So how do we go about actually making the hat patch? Well, the easiest way to do it is just to order it from Weaver. That eliminates the whole what size, you know, what weight leather do I need to use? What shape do I need to make it? Do I have it symmetrical? They've got everything from the rectangle shape ones to the oval ones to whatever this little guy is right here. That's pretty cool, but I can't remember what that shape's called. So they've got all of that. You don't have to worry about anything. You can order straight from them. Now, when I made mine, I didn't want the traditional hat patch that's just centered in the middle of the hat. Those look fantastic, but I like doing things a little different. So instead, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be offsetting it to one side a little bit. And I know you saw that in the thumbnail, but let's go ahead and jump in. The first thing that we need to do is just knock out the prep steps. So let's start by marking out the tooling pattern with our wing dividers. I'm just going to be using the marks on the pattern to set the distance. Then we can trace the pattern and tape the back of the leather. And of course, we're going to want to case the leather. Now, this is, this is not something where we're going to be drenching the leather or anything like that. I just took a spray bottle and dampened the top of the leather and let it sit for a few minutes, and we're good to go. Now, the first step that we're going to be doing after the prep steps is adding the letters to the corners of the card. So why would I add the letters now instead of later in the process? Well, this is one of those things that's pretty frequently messed up. It's really easy to get the letters crooked or upside down, something like that. Well, if I've got a step that I know is easily messed up, I wanna do that as early in the process as the project will allow. And for this project, I can literally do it at the very beginning as soon as the prep steps are done. If I'm gonna mess this up, I wanna do it now before I put a lot of work in, rather than later in, you know, down the road when I've got a couple of hours worth of work into this and then I have to start over if I mess it up. So obviously, getting the letters straight is pretty crucial. So what I'm gonna do, first I'm gonna make sure the letter's right side up. Then I'm gonna flush up the edge of the stamp with the edge of the leather. Then if I take my time and make sure it lines up, my letter should come out right side up and straight. Then we can cut it in. And really, this might be the easiest project we've ever done when it comes to cutting in the design. It's literally just the spade symbol in the middle. Now we can go ahead and start beveling it, but instead of beveling it to the outside and raising that spade symbol, I thought we'd bevel to the inside of it and do what's called inverted carving, where essentially we bevel to the inside of the line instead of the outside. So I'm gonna be using a steep checkered bevel. And what that's gonna do for us, is gonna make the design look like it's inset into the leather instead of raised and sitting on top. So with that done, we could go ahead and add the border to it. And for me, with this being a Western style poker card, a rope border makes a lot of sense. I'm just gonna line the edge of that rope border up with the tooling window that we put in earlier and then just work my way around, starting with the corners.
that rope border looks really good on there, but it's lacking a little bit of texture. It needs more. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to use a background stamp and I'll put a link in the description so you know which one I'm using. And this one's going to add a little bit of a cloth type texture to the rope. Now I know it doesn't make sense to add a cloth texture to a rope, but as you'll see, it works really well for this particular application. It's got to get creative sometimes. The carving portion of it is done, which means we can go ahead and start adding some color to it. To start with, I'm just going to be using Phoebe's Chocolate Brown Pro Dye for that spade in the middle. Then we can paint it white. I'm just gonna be using Angelus White. Two coats as always. In one of the next steps, I'm going to be adding antique to bring out the details, but first I want to seal it with some tan coat. Now this isn't a layered paint job, so I'm pretty comfortable sealing it with a liquid sealer and a dauber, but I want to seal it before I put the antique on there to protect that white so that it doesn't get muddy. Then I'm just going to cover the whole thing with Phoebe's dark brown antique finish and let it sit for about an hour. Once it's had time to dry, I'm just going to buff most of the antique off. So that clip showed it being pretty grimy at the end, and for me it was a little too dirty, so I just went back over it with a damp cloth and lifted a lot of that antique off of the surface, and it finished up really nicely. So get it to the point where you're happy with it, then go back over it with leather sheen or tan coat or something like that, and seal it again so we lock all that color in. So the hat patch itself is done, but now we have to attach it to the hat. 
I could easily put it in the center like most traditional hats are gonna be, but I wanted something a little bit more unique. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it off to one side and I want it to look like it's tucked into the hat band. It's a, it's a you know snapback baseball cap. It doesn't have a hat band, but I wanna look, make it look like it's tucked down in there. So to do that, I'm gonna grab a piece of poster board and cut that to the same size as the hat patch and we can use that to make our adjustments and you'll see what I mean, I'll just show you. So like I said, I just cut a piece of poster board to the same size as the hat patch and then I'm gonna use that poster board to make my adjustments and get the angle that I want. So now we got it tooled, we got the color on it, now it's time to attach it to the hat. How are we gonna do that? Well, we can use the adhesive. There's an iron-on adhesive that you can use that will lock the hat patch to the hat. Problem is, I don't have one of those little machines that you lock it in, you let it sit there for like 30 seconds, it's like 400 degrees from one side and 300 degrees from the other side. I don't have one of those. So instead, I tried to do it with my iron. That didn't work out so great. And now my wife gets a new iron. But anyway, I figured out another way that does work. I ended up going with Leather Crafter Cement from Feebings. Now I've used this stuff on other projects before. In my opinion, it is second only to barge cement. It holds that well. The advantage is it, you can move it around if you need to. But there's a little bit of a trick to applying a hat patch using this Leather Crafter Cement. So let me show you how we do that. So the trick is to paint the glue on. If you just run a bead around the outside of it and a little bit in the middle like you might normally do, it's just gonna end up squishing out the sides and then you're gonna have glue around the edges of your, your hat patch on your hat. So what you wanna do is you wanna grab an old brush and paint it on in a light coat, especially light around the edges. This is where we get to the tricky part and you might wanna grab an extra set of hands before you attempt it, or either that or practice on an old hat, one of the two. So essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna use rubber bands to hold it in place while the glue dries. The challenge is to hold it in place without it sliding around, because if it slides around, the glue's gonna smear. So maybe grab your wife or your hubby to help out Put enough rubber bands on there to make sure that it holds its shape around the edges and really contours to the hat. Then we're gonna set it aside, let it dry overnight. And just like that, within a few hours worth of work, you've got an original, very cool, unique hat. Well, that's gonna do it for this video. I will see you in the next one. In the meantime, go make something amazing.